Hi guys, my name is Long Vo and I'm going to take you guys to Yen Bao Dai today or the Bao Dai Palace. He was the last emperor of Vietnam. In the last city, there's actually three different palaces and all of them have different purposes. Palace number three is where the emperor would live. The palace number two is where they would do a lot of the royal events. So this is the number one palace. This is where they do like formal meetings and where the emperor would do a lot of his work. So without further ado, let's go check it out. Come on. So there's a lot of different destinations we need to stop by, but it looks like some of the main ones. Right over here is going to be right next to us. It has the vintage car garage. 26 over here is looking like the main... Go and check it out because if I look at a map, I really don't know what I'm doing anyways. Let's go. So when you first come in the gate, you're going to see over here, we have the vintage cars right to start right off. Oh look, they have some... Uh wildlife over here you can see this is a very uh, secluded area with lots of zebras and unicorns why is there zebras and unicorns i don't know <laughs> it is very spiritual to the vietnamese people um they say like it has spirit so if you cut the tree down it's really bad luck if you cut trees down you will be haunted so stop cutting trees down you hear that folks i don't know if you need to believe in climate change but believe in uh, being haunted by the ghost of the trees so. and so in the lab they have a lot of different um flowers that were brought by the french people so you can see they have like hydrangeas here so there's a big mixture here you get a lot of different like um flora and fauna in the lab you wouldn't get in the rest of vietnam so many vietnamese like come here to take wedding pictures and even just take like um, different cosplay pictures here too. It's a really big photo destination. And um, I guess it kind of gets a really big contrast to what Vietnamese are usually seeing. Wow, everyone, this is Bao Dai Emperor right behind me. Bao Dai was pretty young when he was emperor. I'm not exactly how young, I'll... but Bao Dai, when he was the emperor, he had many different palaces all around Vietnam for him to travel around to. It's actually interesting because, um, so it says right here, Emperor Bao Dai, tabooed name, uh, Nguyen Phu Vinh Thuy, era name Bao Dai. They would become king, they would have a king name. So his real name and king name are different, of course. Um, he became king on the 8th of January, 1926, and his reign was only 19 years long. So like I said, it wasn't too terribly long. And then he was dethroned in 1945. And so nice. It looks like he was the 13th king of the Nguyen dynasty and he was the last emperor of feudal Vietnam. You know, it's a really powerful quote. Basically, he's saying that he would rather be an independent, he, I would prefer to be a citizen of an independent country rather than an emperor of an enslaved one. And it was really, you know, the true message that Bao Dai had is he wanted to free the Vietnamese from the French because he wanted to see an independent country ran by the Vietnamese for the Vietnamese. And so that's, you know, I think for me the saddest part is he ended up passing away overseas. He didn't even get to pass away in his own country, so kind of sad you know let's go look inside his house though and see you know Bao Dai was only 13 years old when he became king and I just think to my head like 13 years old trying to run a country I mean I don't even think you can when I was 13 years old I couldn't even do well in school so so whenever you go inside the palace we have these protective socks to protect the floors because they're old floors these are pretty small these are meant for Vietnamese feet <laughs> it looks like um on the ground floor it's mostly documentary room transition room reception working room studio and you know the queen's the king and queen's living quarters for upstairs so it has the official bedroom on the two rooms to the left you can take any pictures or photos just don't sit on anything and they have of course a statue of badai who are figuring government meetings crazy a lot of their furniture looks almost new <laughs> like it hasn't been touched and preserved very well you can see a map over here of a map of the lat actually in french over here so, you know i'm guessing before looks like we're gonna go into the living room in french architecture and in french a lot of French architecture in the time period. So it looks like a lot of the stuff in here is actually from France. Very pretty table. It looks so interesting. It's actually interesting to see, you know, the kind of like, for example, this is obviously very Vietnamese right here, the buffalo. So look at the other room is for dining purposes. This looks like the main living here. Do not sit on the chairs. Oh, it looks like, look at, so you can see the king and queen. It looks like this is made from eggshell. So this costume was uh, adapted from the king robe, Long Bao, right? Yeah, Long Bao, during the time of the emperor of Bao Dai. So this is the room of Madame de Gaume. Madame de Gaume was uh, his mother actually. And so her real name was Hoang Thi Gaume. And she had been the only wife having the child of the Emperor Khai Den. Queen Nam Phuong's room where she would stay. And then in the center they have like a leisure room. So if you look over here, you can see this is her bed where she laid and there's a replica of her over here 
And it's um, nice to see that in the room, you know, you look at so many pictures of her and him. And now we can try the costume one. So the cost is 80,000 per, per outfit and then take our shoes off. And I chose to be the king today, of course, because you gotta be the king when you're here, right? For only 80,000 Vietnam dong for about, what, $3? You can be the king? I mean, why not? Um, and uh, she told me it's washed daily, so I guess it smells nice and uh, spring fresh. Oh, and we get to wear the cool hat too, yeah. Cái đầu em nó hay to đó chị. Được không? Chị nói ra không? Hay là vừa rồi? Không, không ra nào. Kệ đi. Wow, amazing. So I think beforehand they always have to like cup your hand like this when you hold the... Right? And then go. Thôi đúng không? Không. Cái gì? Phải không? Lên hả? Lên lắm luôn hả? Phải này hả? Cái này để làm cái gì? Để chỉ đạo hả? Ồ, oh, đánh ta hả? Oh wow, it's the beating stick <laughs> Okay, so I guess this is what the king would use to beat people with Oh, you have to put your arm behind your back and then hit down like this on people's head, huh? So, um, I don't need to feel the pain of others on this, but... God, you just hit them in the head. <laughs> Behead the peasant! <laughs> oh, she doesn't die. I guess she gets to live today. Oh, okay, nice. Thank you. It's been really fun to learn a lot about a Vietnamese history in a really short amount of time. Remember to follow along to Addicted to Vietnam to see more content similar to this and also to get check out more about food, culture, and all about Vietnam. So... See you on the next episode. Bye, guys.